Take it. Go and give the MC. And in those days, if you play such games, your head can be chopped off. Praise the Lord. It sounds unreasonable, right? It sounds dangerous, isn't it? <laughs> but they did. But they did. Whoever that would take the word of God at face value will not lose faith. If you will take the word of God at face value, this is what he says, that's what I believe. <laughs> you will hold your face up on earth because you will say that the word works for me. Praise the Lord. You will never lose face on earth. In Jesus' precious name, take your seats. I want to welcome you to these wonderful midweek services. Believing God that God will minister unto you and equip you and prepare you. And Friday next week is Good Friday. Praise the Lord. Even though that every Friday is good for us, if you know what I mean. Christians don't have bad day. <laughs> Amen. We don't have bad day. Even if the day is not going the way should we change it? This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. And be glad in. Hold on. Did he say that we will rejoice? No, it's not what it says. It says, I. I will. It's your choice. Amen. It's your choice to rejoice in the day. And if you are not happy that day, please stay away from me. I beg you. See me the day you are happy. <laughs> Amen. I pray that prayer, Lord, deliver me from frowning saints. There are people that wake up frowning. And that's because they had a bad dream. It was only a dream. It was only what? A dream. Do you know that you have the power to determine whether a dream should come to pass or not? If you reject it, it will be rejected. If you accept it, it will be accepted. Dream is not reality. Most often for a believer actually, for a believer, listen, dream is but a warning. Are you hearing me? For a believer, dream is what? A warning. And so, now you can read reality to it, it becomes so. And then somebody say, what about when you dream that you are very rich and you are not rich? It is still a warning that God has proposed that you should be rich. But the way you are living is making you poor. Amen. And somebody said, what about where you dreamt that you, somebody died? You died in the... No. It means that there's something in you that needs to die as a believer. Check your life. There is a part of you that is robbing you of tomorrow. And so the dream showed. You say, they show where they were burying you. You need to bury something. End it before it will end you. And so 90% of the time, dream is but a warning for a believer. And God does not lead us by dreams. He leads us by the Spirit. But sometimes he can alert us. He can warn us. Amen. And so your interpretation of it is what it means. But next Friday, we have the ninth of his blood. Praise the Lord. It is the first time in this country that we are having that program. In this country. What will you make out of it? Or what will it make out of you? Very often, people attach miracles to the man of God. Very often. And there's nothing wrong with that. He said, today, pastor will just touch me. You know, 
It is good if the man of God will touch you, but you can touch the man of God with your faith. And what is more important is for you to touch the man of God with your faith. That's what is important. The Bible tells us a story in Matthew chapter 9. From verse 18. It starts with the leader of a synagogue who came to Jesus and worshipped him and told Jesus. And he said to him, my daughter is almost dead. If you can come and pray and lay your hand on her, the man said to Jesus, if you can come, if you can lay your hand on her, she will live again. Praise the Lord. And the Bible said, when Jesus listened to the man, Jesus was touched and moved. And Jesus said, let us go. If you read from verse 18. And they were going to do a miracle. Because the faith of the synagogue leader, devil does not respect your position. He was a synagogue leader, but the daughter was dead. Is that in your Bible? And so the Bible said, as Jesus was going to do a miracle, his disciples followed him. If you read from verse 19, Matthew chapter 9 from verse 19. And so Jesus went and his disciples, disciples went with him. So it was not only Jesus, there were others. And the Bible said, as they were going to the house of the leader of the synagogue, as they were going, a woman from nowhere, without invitation, without an appointment, the woman decided to crash in on Jesus. The Bible said that for 12 years, this woman has had bleeding. Uh, women, you know what it is to bleed, especially during your monthly thing. You know how inconvenient it is. Praise the Lord. And you wish it will happen very quickly and so that you can be yourself. Because very often it disorganizes your day. Now picture now. Picture now 12 years. Daily. You, 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 you you know, you just said that three, four days, it, it, it you know, disorganized you. Amen? Certain level of loss of blood can lead to death. And so now imagine daily losing blood. Losing blood. So remember, they didn't have the technology that we have now. And so, and thank God, because if, they, if she eats some of the food, people eat not, maybe she would have died. No, I'm telling you the truth. Because they were more with natural food. Amen? You go to a farm, you get vegetable, you get fruit, you eat them fresh. They don't know fertilizer. No, they don't know fertilizer. And so food came with full nutrients. Not our food now that comes so big, but so little. No, I'm telling you the truth. Praise the Lord. When you see that big orange, big orange, and the vitamin is, the water, yes, two tablespoons. And the energy you need to squeeze out that two tablespoons. The, <laughs> no, seriously, this is the truth. Sometimes I, I ask, is it worth it? It was last week, isn't it, that I bought... I bought some orange. It was looking so beautiful. Just at the gate as we were coming back. I said to John, go and buy. John went and bought. He said, how many? I said, buy all. <laughs> but, but. So at the paint floor, I said to her, mommy, I said, honey, let's take a range. I even invited the pastor, the kind of engineer fella. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Before you invite your friend for a feast, check the food. <laughs> and she caught one or two. <laughs> the thing is like stone. <laughs> and she said, honey, there's no water in your rage. I thought it was a joke. I took one that looks quite nice. <laughs> uh, God will help our economy. Oh. 
Praise the Lord. It was so hard to squeeze. I had, no, I didn't lick it. I have to eat the orange, if you know what I mean. No, true, I have to cut it now into four. I didn't have the strength to squeeze it. Praise the Lord. I didn't have the strength to do what? Enoch will have no chance of licking that orange because it's stronger than him. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So they had this natural food until today. If you go to the village, to the village, you see people living 80, 90, walking to their farm. You, you, you sleep in AC. You walk from here to the gate. <sighs> No, is it not true? What is the problem? Agric. Amen? You can eat all the delicacies, but the people in the village can swallow in the morning, swallow in the afternoon, swallow in the evening. But if you see the vegetable soup they eat. No, do you get my point? You, you take tea and mayonnaise in the morning. In the afternoon, you lick something you lick. In the evening, you lick something again and swallow or eat. Anyway, let's not deviate, but you got my point. Praise the Lord. Twelve years, this woman was bleeding. Twelve years. And sometimes, the depth of suffering makes your faith real. Sometimes, the cost of affliction makes your faith real. But sometimes, because you have solutions and options to the problem, your faith is weak and weakened. And the woman heard that Jesus was going to pass her way. Maybe that would be the only time that Jesus will pass that way. Normally, it will be, let Jesus pray for me. If Jesus will pray for me. If Jesus will pray for me. But, but the woman said, the woman said, it's not about him praying for me. But if I can touch, all I need to do is to touch the hem of his garment. If I can touch a piece of his cloth. If I can just manage and touch. Who taught her that? Where did that, where did she get that revelation from? And she said, if I can touch the hem of his garment, this 12 years affliction will be judged. For today, the healer is passing my way. And I will not be the same again. The healer. Sometimes certain grace comes your way once in a year. Next Friday is that day. Sometimes grace for a change comes your way one time. The Bible said that at the pool of Bethesda, an angel will go down at a certain point in the year and stir up the water and whoever that jumps in, anybody that jumps in, is made whole of the affliction. And this woman, she said, all I need to do is for me to touch the hem of his garment. And the Bible said, Jesus was going to attend to somebody. She was not on the list of appointments where Jesus was supposed to visit. Praise the Lord. And then she crept in from behind. There were others also there. And they were hoping to get a miracle from Jesus. If you read from the book of Luke, there were multitudes that were following Jesus. And that was why when Jesus said, who touched me? Peter said, what are you talking about? Multitude are touching you. And you are saying, who touched you? But Jesus said, no, 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 no. You don't get it, Peter. Everybody will come to church next Friday. But who will come with faith? Who will come with an expectation? Jesus said to Peter, multitude, yes, touch me. But faith has touched me. 
faith has touched me. On Sunday, I gave you an account of after our 31st service, as I went into my room, removed my clothes. And, and Elizabeth, as she was tidying up, took it like this. And the power of God came upon her. And John came and touched the same thing. The power of God slayed, her, slayed him. And then PDA also came in. And the power of God slayed PDA. And then Enoch came in and saw everything and ran out. I went to say to the mom, come, come and receive your own. And they were all slain, not by touching, but the mantle of the man of God, touching them. Touching them. Praise the Lord. The other time, a few weeks ago, I finished praying, and Lizzie came in. And then my prayer cushion was there. And then she carried it. She carried it. She said, let her tap. I said, now, in the name of Jesus, take it. I didn't touch her. I was seated. And the power of God came upon her. Praise the Lord. The power of God came upon her. You cannot argue with the word of God that it is like electricity. It shocks it only shocks those that touch it by faith. Are you hearing me? And so the power of God is life. And when Jesus said, who touched me? The Bible said the woman showed up shaking, frightened. Jesus said, daughter, you have touched where? Daughter, you have what? Touched where? There was something that Timothy told me some months ago last year. And he said that he was having this issue. He couldn't sleep. You know, he said he was feeling somehow, so he couldn't sleep. And he didn't know what to do. He realized that there was one cloth that I gave to him. He said he took it. And he put it on. He said everything was over. He said he slept. He slept. Praise the Lord. There is power in the word. There is power in the church. There is power on the altar. There is power on the anointing for those that will come by faith. God honors faith because faith honors God. The program is for you. It is for me. But how prepared are you? It's our year of liberty and dominion. The night of his blood will deliver liberty and dominion into your hand. But how prepared are you? Things may not have worked in your life. But from that night you will tell yourself. The blood will make things to work in my life. I don't know what you have battled with for years. Bodily sickness. Bodily condition. Bodily affliction. By now, you should have write, written their expiry date. You say, you enemy from hell. I charge you that till Friday, 29th, I will see you no more. And every day, you are building up your most holy faith. And say, Lord, this program, this time, one time, in these years, it will not, I will not miss it. I will not. Praise the Lord. The Bible said that in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, Peter was passing by. Peter was passing by. There were so many people, the sick could not reach to touch Peter. And then they invented a way to make contact with Peter. They invented it. They didn't read it from the Bible. Jesus did not do such a thing. Read again. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Jesus didn't do such a thing. The shadow of Jesus did not heal anybody. Go and read your Bible. If you see it, come and teach me. But the people that were afflicted, the people that needed help and miracle, they said, if we cannot touch Peter, put us on the roadside where Peter will pass. All we need is for Peter's shadow. Not a handshake. 
not his mantle. They, they took their faith to another level. They took faith to another level. They said, put us on the dusty road. Let us suffer the shame. Let us, you know, we are in an age where people say, I don't want anybody to know I am, I am sick. So you package and cover and meanwhile you are dying on the inside. You are bleeding on the inside and you are trying to live what I call fake protection because eventually it will manifest that you are sick. And so they said, put us on the dusty road where Peter will pass. And, and if Peter's shadow, is, if his shadow we just touch our affliction, they said, where did they get that from? Where did they get that from? We have an, a greater and greater opportunity. Praise the Lord. I read the story. Papa Adeboye went to the U.S. And one man was privileged. Privileged that Papa Adeboye came to his house. And so they entertained him. And after he left, the chair Papa Adeboye sat. The man and the wife, I don't know exactly what the problem was. They've been having that issue for years. And the man sat on the chair after Papa Adeboye left. And the wife sat. And that affliction came to an end. Without the prayer. Papa Adeboye was there. They didn't ask for prayer. Are you hearing me? And all they said, if he can sit in our house, that will make it. And so, as Papa left, and two of them sat on that chair, they got healed. And then they shared the testimony. Some people from the church that have issues and all that came to their house. And it was reported, everyone that sat on that chair, everyone got healed. Everyone! Are you hearing me? Everyone that sat on that chair. And so the man now removed the chair and put elsewhere and put another chair in the same place. Removed the chair that Papa sat on. Removed it. Took another one. Put there. Are you hearing me? The anointing was not hanging in the air. The anointing was resident on the ground there. Are you hearing me? Because when he replaced the chair, people still sat on the new chair and were getting their healing. Praise the Lord. When they took the well of water from Isaac, the Bible said he dug another one. They took from him. He dug another one. No. Meanwhile, the Philistines were digging and there was no water on the same ground. But wherever Isaac dug, there was water. In the same ground, in the same location. Why? The water was in Isaac. Are you hearing me? Jesus said, Out of us shall flow rivers of living water. So if I stay here, if I stay here and dig, I will have water. Praise the Lord. My cousin once said to me, He said, He doesn't understand me. I said, What is the problem? He said, What day? Day we hold to sell, nobody will buy. He said, but the moment I hold it, everybody would like to buy it. He said, he doesn't understand it. I said to him, it's called grace. He said, the same thing, they will have it. They will have it. Ask mommy, I took a car, our first Mercedes. I took it to, is it a call center? He came to make a call to my friends. And then, you know, I finished making call. They escorted me because my friend owns the place. He said, ah, Brafa, is that your car? I said, yes. He said, uh, I would like to buy it. <laughs> I said, you cannot afford it. He said, I should try him. You know, this God is a humorous God. 
And I remember the time, so I don't know exactly, 20 something years ago. And I told him joking that the vehicle is 650, 650,000, which on all account is not money that you should pay for a vehicle, second hand vehicle. Brought it from Cotonou or Lome, fully loaded anyhow. He said, if he pays me the money, will I release the car to him? I said, why not? Why not? To come with car and go back with taxi with 650. There was no phone to call. 750, praise God. I said to him, do me one favor. When you pay, follow me in the same car. Let's go to Equity, equity Bank. Equitorial Trust Bank. <laughs> Mike, I don't bank those days. On our land. I never took me serious. I thought we were joking. Not knowing that a day before they have had a hit in their business. Are you hearing? They've had a hit in their business. He said, okay, let him get some things. Two or three of his friends jumped into the car. Let's go. I said, to where? They said, let them go to Shopee Plaza and pay me. Ah! I said, you put serious. Do you know I was thinking it was a joke? We drove to our Shopee. Uh, there was this CB at that time of Africa, Central Bank of Africa. They went there, they brought money, carried, put in the boot. He said, oh, yeah. where are we going? I said, no, Equitorial Trust Bank. I didn't want to be hit on the road. I never thought anybody would buy that car at 350, to be honest. Never thought. Are you hearing me? We carried together. We got to uh, Equitorial Trust Bank. Paid in the money complete. I had the teller. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I said to him, I said, Siki, I said, Siki, drop me in my office in Ogba. You carry the car. This is the wonder. He said he can't drive. I said, I said, what? He said he can't drive. He said that's why he took his friend. I said, let's go. The friend entered. I drove to Ogba. I gave them key. And when I told, I told, I told mommy, I said, honey, <laughs> uh, I've sold the car. He said, which car? I said, the car I went out with. The car I went out with. She said, I sold it. How much? When I told her, praise the Lord. She was, I thought she would complain about the car. She said, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Do you know that that was how the capital to start what I left Nigeria Limited came about? God gave us that capital. Because we only bought that car about 150 or 200,000 there. Do you get it? Do you get it? Miracles comes from within you. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. The question is, where is your expectation? What is your desire? The woman has suffered for 12 years. How long have you suffered? You are being prepared for that meeting next Friday. More than 70% of church members are not here. And so you see, they will all come on Friday, but they wouldn't have been prepared for it. The Bible said, before Esther we faced the king, she was prepared. Prayerful preparation prevents poor performance. Look at the situation and say, Lord, by the blood, the yoke of poverty shall be broken in my life. The yoke of affliction must come to an end. The yoke of stagnation this good Friday, as I take the blood, ah, there will be a judgment on everything that's contrary to my life. And every day, in prayer, in fasting, you are preparing yourself. You are equipping yourself. When they say, put us by the roadside so that the shadow of Peter, per adventure, will fall upon us. And the Bible said, as many of them that were laid down there, they all got what? Healed. Has God changed? Was it Peter that healed them? The woman with the issue of blood, was it Jesus that healed them? What did Jesus say? Your faith, your faith has made you whole. 
What would Jesus say to you on Friday next week? No. Who will have faith for the healing next Friday? Who will have faith for the miraculous next Friday? Who will say this Friday? This Friday is my night for a miracle. It's my night for a change. And so you prepare yourself. There is no situation that cannot be changed before God. The man that was in paralysis for 38 years, the Bible said when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, any condition you can manage will not be healed. Any condition you can manage, any condition you can live with, forget about healing. But desperation fast forwards a miracle. Are you hearing me? Desperation do what? Forwards your miracle. Last Sunday we were talking about the power of your word. Nothing was made that was made without the word. And so you build up you build up an explosive material with your word and say that Friday there will be an explosion in my life. I will explode into liberty and dominion. I sit back and I think, I say, what exactly do I desire to happen on the night of his blood? And I remember the things that has happened in Munich when we have such program. I see great deliverances that take place. I see, ah, 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 ah. Addictions healed. I see people renewed. Are you hearing me? I see people revitalized. Very often when they speak, when I speak to those in Germany, sometimes they will tell me, this person that used to come to church, if you see the way they are looking now, you won't believe it's the same person. I say, grace has departed. On Friday, there is renewal. You are youth, renewed like the eagles. I'm talking about renewal of your youth. I'm talking about renewal of your destiny. Whatsoever, there are some of you that say, Lord, I want to be extracted from this family of poverty. There's nothing wrong with it. Are you hearing me? What you hold will hold you. Lord, I want to be exempted from this family of poverty. Family of sickness and disease. This one is sick. That one is sick. That one is sick. Every year is routine. You say, Lord, break me out of that circle. Lord, I want to quit from it. Praise the Lord. You can enforce the life of faith into your life. You can push the life of faith. Don't be numbered among the sick. Don't be numbered among the poor. Praise the Lord. There are some of you that will say, Lord, any association that does not move me forward, Remove me from it in Jesus' mighty name. By all means. By all means, remove me from it. No. If you are like them, how can you help them? No. If you are like them, how can you help them? He said, no matter what it is, eh, this family, we are united, we are together. Together in what? No, together in what? In sickness and in health. In poverty and in stagnation. Is that the kind of association you want? Get angry. Get provoked. Tell yourself, next Friday, I will be separated. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You are so angry in your spirit, you can't wait for that day to come. Pastor Chris shared with us once, he was about to pray for a small boy that was just seven, eight years old, on a wheelchair. And as Pastor Chris was coming to this boy, Instead of this boy looking and believing God for prayer, Pastor Chris said the leg of that boy was shaking like this, ready to run. Ready, wanting to run. 
pastor said, as soon as he got, he said, before his hand can, the boy jumped out of the field which and ran away. When did he get healed? When he made up his mind, he would run that day. It happened the day he said, if pastor would touch me, and as he saw pastor coming, his leg was already exercising to run. Somebody on a wheelchair that has not run before. And before, as pastor was about to, pastor said, he jumped out of that wheelchair and ran away. Praise the Lord. Who is ready to run away from poverty next week? May you be the one. Who is ready to run away from affliction and sicknesses and diseases and infirmity? May you be the one. You use your mouth and say, Jesus said the poor will always be in your midst. Did he call your name? No, did he talk your name? You said after all. After all, Jesus said the poor will always be in our midst. So is it a must that everybody must be so rich? Me, I'm okay the way I am. Don't come near me. Because bad communication corrupts one. Praise the Lord. I want those that are close to me to become like me in all things in Christ. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? I want them to become like me in all things. You are big. You are what? Big. It's not in what you wear. That's for babies. Somebody did a, a WhatsApp picture of a rich man and a poor man. And the rich man wore expensive, those of you that follow this, in, the, the poor man wore expensive jacket, 1,500. Watch, 500. Shoe, 1,000 something. Everything. Thousands. What he wore calculated close to four thousand dollars, and they showed the rich man T-shirt seventy-five dollar, uh, shoe fifty dollar. Everything that the rich man was wearing was less than three hundred. The poor man was wearing over four thousand. It wasn't from Nigeria; it was from America. Have you seen Mark Zuckerberg? How many times have you seen him on suit? He has one ash color T-shirt. I don't know how many he has. Praise the Lord. Steve Jobs, when he was alive, what does he wear? Turtleneck, long t-shirt with jeans. Turtleneck, what does he wear? You that uses what he produces, when you are coming out, you deck from head to toe with attachment and detachment and detergent. Are you hearing me? You wear all the detachment, attachment, and detergent. You want people to know you are rich. No, when you are rich, <laughs> when you are rich, you don't need people to say it. Amen. What tells you that you are prosperous is on the inside. It's on the inside. Praise the Lord. Even that is a mentality. Foolishness is a mentality. Did you hear what I said? Foolishness is what? There is nothing like honorable poor man. Don't let them deceive you. He said, at least, I may not be rich, I have honor. Honor what? Your landlord gave you quick notice, remove your roof, block your toilet. You still say there's honor. You say there's honor. Say, God forbid. I started saying I would be a landlord many, many years ago. And before the age of 30, I was already a landlord in Lagos, not in my village. No, are you hearing me? I'm not a local champion to go and build... Uh, uh, where is your house in the village? Amazingly, in the village, I'm not a landlord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm not a landlord yet. Amen. Why? I don't, I'm not a village champion. Those from the village, they cannot survive in Lagos for one week. One week, they cannot survive in Lagos. Are you hearing me? But when you go to the village, you can buy a complete house with 30 million complete. They will pack out, you pack in. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? We want to start a church by the grace of God in Omaha here this year. Amen. We are going to start by the grace of God. And I sent uh, one of the pastors that will join us to go to Omaha here and look for a venue. And he was looking at a venue for rent. 500,000, 1 million, 2 million, duplex, 2 million, the other one, 500,000. I asked him, I said, hold on. No. I said, how much is it to buy a bungalow? You know, more had the capital of Fabia State. He said, oh, let him go and check. <laughs> he went and checked. Praise the Lord. And he came back, he gave me prizes. 13 million, 15 million, 17 million. I said, what? He said, yeah, that's the prize. I said, for a bungalow? In no more, he had the stick capital. I said, don't worry, stop looking for rent, we'll buy. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because that money will not buy a plot of land here. Half a plot will not get. Half a plot, it will not get for you on this street. And now they are telling me, in no more, he had the city capital in a good estate with gates and everything. 30 million to 20 million, you can get. I said, how much is duplex? It's 40 from 35 million to duplex. Say, God is good. <laughs> Say, God is good. So, that is in the capital. Oh. So, in other places, it will even be cheaper. Prepare yourself. And I said to the pastor, I said, we will buy. I said, don't worry, stop looking to rent, come. And I'm making up my mind to buy. And we are going to buy. Shout hallelujah. We are going to buy. We will start in our own property. Praise the Lord. And so some of you get ready. You will be sent to home here with him to start the work. <laughs> After saying amen. <laughs> now, what did you say? What did you say? <laughs> brother, brother, where are you? You just earn yourself a place in that journey. Shout hallelujah. She will go. She, you are not... Amen. That is the spirit. She will go. Praise the Lord. Uh, because, uh, you know, we are expanding. And she's still single for now. While she's single, let us do all we can. But the time cometh when she will no longer be single. If we want to send, we'll ask the husband. You are blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. It is a night to change destinies. Next Friday. You see, the devil will try to program you to miss it. Be careful what you say. Be careful what you do. The devil is a bad devil. That is his native nature. Praise the Lord. Prepare yourself looking on to Jesus. Prepare yourself looking forward to that day. The woman with the issue of blood, read it again and again and again. Listen to this message again and again and say, Lord, if you did it for this woman with the issue of blood, and if the shadow of Peter healed people and drive away demons, Lord, Friday, Friday, as I approach the cup of blessings, something will break loose in my life. There will be a change in my life. And then as you say it, every day and night, you are listening, you are building up your most holy faith. As you take the communion, power will come upon you. Praise the Lord. Don't look at anybody, because these things are different too. Charles Spurgeon said that nobody will go to heaven in a crowd. Every heaven Every ticket to heaven is single. Are you hearing me? Whether you are married or not, when you get your ticket to heaven, it is just for one. Every ticket to heaven admits only one. And so don't let anybody make you lose your destiny. And that's what the devil will do. To make those around you, to make those you see, beautiful, especially those of you that deal with the issue of food, I beg you, I beg you, guard your heart jealously. Guard your heart with all diligence. Don't let anybody provoke you. Amen? 
give them the food to eat so that your spirit will not be vexed. The devil will send some people to vex you. I'm warning you ahead of time. Don't be like Peter that was told you will surely betray me. He said, never, I will even die with you. Instead of him to watch and pray, he didn't. Amen. Did you hear what I said? We already know the sensitivity of man. Food is a sensitive issue with man. And so, don't fight the food. Give the food. Give it with extra blessing. Give it with extra care. Praise the Lord. And the same thing you do. Because the moment you are preparing yourself for a miracle, the devil will try to visit. Before the anointing will come. I believe that next week is for you. I believe it is for me. I believe it is for us. And to get there, we are going to have awesome testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Awesome testimony. Awesome testimony. Awesome testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up on your feet. Just make a declaration, Lord, may I be among those that will testify. Lord, may I be among those that will testify. Friday next week, I must be among those that will testify. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will not lose my miracle. I will not miss my visitation. Lord, next week is my time. As it was with the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, much more you will do for me. Lord, much more. Lord, much more you will do for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I build up my most holy faith. The word of God will do it for me. The word of God will do it for me. The word of God will do it for me. Lord, your word will deliver. Your word will heal. I thank you, Father. I look forward to next week. I am expectant next week. This miracle will happen. It will happen. It will happen. May you be a receiver of it. Uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, lift up your hand. My father, as we all prepare, wherever we are, whether here or online, deliver us from unreasonable and wicked men. Lord, every assignment of the enemy to distract us, we condemn it in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, may we be shielded with your love. May we be protected with your mercy. May this coming program be a point of breakthrough. For every man, for every woman, believe in the Lord for a great miracle. You will receive it in Jesus' mighty name. You will receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just lift up your hand and give God thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. For the Lord is good. 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 In Jesus' precious name. Lift up your tithe. You are offering before the Lord and worship. And give thanks. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your word always makes us well. Your word is always building us up. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. And thank you, Lord, as we give. We support the gospel. We support the local church. And by faith, we call forth our miracle in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father. To you be the glory and honor and power in Jesus' precious name. Now, you can also give your tithe and offering through the bank account online. Amen. And then whatever you want to do, in terms of what we are doing, God will bless you. Praise the Lord. Please, like we know now, after service, there will be food, right? So just sit. <laughs> I have to ask. Uh, there will be food. So just relax and uh, eat comfortably. Amen. Amen. And if I were you, you will come on Friday fasting. So that nothing will distract you. Amen. Amen. Just dedicate that Friday. Chewing the word. Preparing yourself with the word. 
If everything was made with the word, then tell the word of God with your mouth what it will do for you. And as you do that, oh, God will amaze you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for all the partners, the helpers, the supporters in our feeding project. Lord, thank you for the laborers and those that serve. Lord, I pray that even this season will be their season of visitation. It will be the season of miracles. In the name of Jesus Christ, no one will lose their reward. In whatever capacity they help and support the gospel, Lord, their reward will look at them. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you. I bless your expectation. I bless your desire. I bless your going out and your coming in. The glory of the Lord shall be seen upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree peace. I decree peace. I decree peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Let us share the grace together. Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are following us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the presence of the Most High God forever. You are blessed. So just sit down.